Greetings my friends, how are you doing? This is Zed from Zed Outdoors and I hope you're having an awesome day. So today I'm out for a few hours with a good friend of mine, Mark, and in this particular woodland we are hoping to forage some spruce roots uh, which I can use back at the base camp uh, that I'm going to be building. Uh, now there are some litterings here and it's been quite difficult to get into this part of the woodland because it's overgrown quite significantly with bramble but we've managed to persevere and now we're here. So one thing I did want to quickly do is issue a bit of an apology for my previous video which was talking about the shelter that I'm going to be building at my base camp. The audio on that was absolutely atrocious. I did explain on the video itself in the comments section that um, it was a very, very heavy storms that day and you couldn't hear it because I was using the lapel mic and it's the first time I'm using that lapel mic. And I checked it there and then I thought the audio was okay. It's only when I got home I realized how bad the audio was and I didn't have time to kind of go back and re-record. And I was really eager to kind of get the video out because I want to try and be regular as much as possible. Uh, but I appreciate the audio on that was not acceptable at all. So my apologies if I blew your eardrums off. So we're in this particular woodland. The weather at the moment is very, very uh, precarious. It's been raining all night and even all morning and it's kind of rain, dry, rain, dry, rain, dry. At the moment it's kind of dry. So fingers crossed it will stay like that. So I'll introduce you to my friend Mark where we're going to hopefully in this video forage some spruce roots. So here I am with a good buddy Mark. He's made an appearance on a previous video actually a while ago. Hey there, Mark. Oh, I'm doing well, Zed. How are you? I'm doing well. Yeah, I, I didn't recognise you without your fancy tash. I know, I know. Uh, the uh, I'm, tash. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to cultivate something else there. I know, you look you look magical with mystical powers, man, with that <laughs> moustache and stuff, man. But it's good to see you after so long, Mark. Yeah, likewise, likewise. It's it's been far too long. And uh, yeah, you've you've got me in here to uh, dig up the woods. That's it. I'm just going to hold the camera. You do all the work. Uh, well, which is normally the case, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm why not, good. indeed? Well, I'm I'm no expert at this, but um, obviously Zed's building his um, his his, uh, his little shelter. So one of the things he, he's going to be using a lot of is uh, natural cordage. So one of your good natural cordage cordages is spruce roots and these literally sit about an inch about half a thumb down from the surface so what I tend to do is just um, dig down until I come across one and where you find one you normally find a few we just follow it along don't we uh, just basically? just follow it along but um, the, the, the thing that I've noticed in the past when you're doing this, when you find one, rather than digging on top of it, you actually damage it. Try to dig beside it and then just gently follow it back, tease either side of it, and then you can sort of pull up like so. Clean it off a bit. And this is obviously going to come to a node here somewhere. So we'll again beside. We're just using the primitive divin stick I made in a previous video. Look so, at that tool. Look at that bad boy. It's obviously hard on the edge. Where's your tool? What tool? <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave it there. <laughs> so it turns out we've got some red cedar here as well so essentially we can hopefully forage uh, some spruce roots and cedar roots. One thing I did forget to mention is that if you haven't seen it already I have actually done a detailed tutorial on the harvesting cedar root with Mance who's a head instructor at a school called Wilderness Pioneers based in Oxford here in the United Kingdom. If you do a search on my channel you'll see that. So this is not really a tutorial today but on that video he goes through a lot of detail on how to kind of harvest it. Um, if you remember the primitive digging stick uh, video that I've done recently uh, this is the actual stick here. I'm not sure if you can see it on the camera. So obviously this was fire hardened um, and I don't know if you remember when I harvested this I had a little bit of a splinter come off here so kind of a bit was peeling off. So when I went home I shaped this up so obviously it's a lot smoother on the hands and what I did was, I don't know if you can see it, but these little bits here I took a knife and I made sure I smoothed it all off. These were little pokey bits that were digging into your hand when you held it and now it's so smooth to hold. So no matter which way you hold it, and it's got a natural ergonomic here where it's got a bend, um, so obviously digging it is a lot easier. So anyway, enough talking, let's get digging.
snap quickly. <laughs> get, get a nice snap. Let me contribute a nice manly bit. Look at that. Yeah, look at that. Up, That's what real men do. Wait, bits of dead wood on there, flipping me. Oh, well, that's what I sorry to do soon then. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just stretching. Oh. Oh. The sizzle. Here we go. <laughs> that's the only reason why I hooked up with you, Mark. Oh, yeah. I know, the sizzle. The sizzle. We love the sizzle. So what's on the menu today, Mr. Right, so we're going to make a frittata, okay. which basically is a fancy name for an omelette. <laughs> um, now, build, build it up with some, uh, we're going to start off, we're going to fry off some spring onions or scallions for you guys in the States. We're then going to put in some uh, potatoes, cook those down to a little mash. Um, we've got some uh, beans. This is all uh, all homegrown in the allotment as well. And by the way, you've got a very impressive allotment, haven't you? Grown your own stuff. Well, well, it's it's an allotment, but um, but yeah, I mean, we we get we get a good amount of uh, good amount of produce out of there. We 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 get our successes and failures, like any uh, anyone who delves into growing your own stuff. Um, totally organic. We don't use any. Uh, we don't use any um, chemicals, pesticides, herbicides, or anything. So uh, yeah, the cabbages can come on, uh, come up as if they've been chewed by slugs. That's because they have, because we don't kill the slugs. So do you find the impact in terms of your growth, in terms of how much you're able to grow and how much they eat and destroy? Well, you, you just take the rough with the smooth. Um, we, I, I don't think we've ever had anything completely destroyed by pests. I'm getting destroyed by the smoke. <laughs> it says wide in front. I don't think we've ever had anything. On this camera. Yeah. Don't think we've ever had anything totally destroyed by a pest. But you know, if you if you want everything to be supermarket quality, with like everything all nice and crisp and sharp edges, and not with a slight bit of chewing out the side, then go to the supermarket and buy it. You know, if if I, I just can't see the point in putting uh, putting loads of chemicals on stuff to get it in your body. I'd say you may as well just, you know, it'd probably work out cheaper and less effort to go to the supermarket and buy the stuff. You're the magnet now, aren't you, for the smoke? Yes, Doesn't matter yeah. where you go, it's going to come at you. <laughs> so you've added some potatoes in now? Yep, pre-boiled potatoes. So we just crush those down. Now, I like to get a little bit of caramelisation on the... Uh, I mean potatoes and onions before I go in with the eggs, so put those in, just toss those around, get a little bit of a sizzle. Might need to add a little bit more butter a bit later, but we'll just let that get a bit of a crust on. And then we'll add some beans. These are some sort of special hybrid yellow runner beans, which have got some sort of special nutritional value. Again, I've, I've cheated, I've pre, uh, pre boiled these at home. Now, have I got the nerve to say, do you like your food spicy, Mr. Sharp? <laughs> you'll see a brown person behind the camera if you like your food spicy. <laughs> that is lethal. That one there, little scotch bonnet. Oh, I've heard about these. Yeah, that one's lethal. That one is hot, but not as lethal as that little bugger. So we'll 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 maybe put some of that in a little bit at the end just to see how it comes. Yeah, up. yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the the other one we're going to need the toilet facilities if we're going to. That's the one. That's the one. <laughs> Those um, Scotch bonnets when they first came off, I don't think Sharon actually realised. So while the breakfast is cooking away, I just wanted to take this opportunity uh, to say that it was only last night I got a couple of messages on YouTube uh, telling me that I've reached 40,000 subscribers. So at the time of recording this video, I've literally just passed that. So I just wanted to take this opportunity to sincerely thank each and every one of you for subscribing, for commenting, for liking 
or dislike him for pretty much any form of engagement I'm sincerely grateful for. In terms of giveaway, I'm going to wait until when and as I get to 50,000 and have some pretty cool stuff planned then uh, to give away. And so for the here and now, once again, thank you. And speaking of channels, I want to give a shout out to a great friend of mine, Martin, and he runs a fantastic channel called Norwegian Woods. And guessing from the title, it's surprising to hear that he's actually from Norway. I know, it's shocking, right? But he's a fantastic guy. I've been watching him for quite a while. Uh, he's a very supportive guy of other channels around here on YouTube. And he just produces some really, really delightful videos. He has a very calm demeanor. I call him like the Scandinavian Charles Bronson. He has like the same reaction to everything. Very softly spoken, very serious. But inside, he's such a, such a nice guy. A very experienced outdoorsman. And obviously, he documents a lot of his travels in Norway and across the border in Sweden. Uh, and he does some fantastic outings, both here uh, in, during the summertime when the weather is great. And also in winter as well, where they get a lot of snow uh, in that part of the country. And uh, he's just a channel I really enjoy watching. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a link below to Martin's channel, aka Norwegian Woods. And it will mean the world to me if you like what you see hit the subscribe button let him know i sent you over and i promise you you will not be disappointed the guy puts out some fantastic content so that's norwegian woods link in the description please do go and check him out Just get him in there. Crack him in. So what's this, Mark? This is dill from your allotment. This is a little bit of dill, yep. Just adds a little bit of seasoning. Almost like a uh, aniseedy flavour. Um, used a lot in Sweden. Um, they'll use it in their pickled fish and bits and pieces. But I found it goes very, very well. Any sort of egg, potato-y, cheesy... Um, type dish dill will go perfect with and it just saves having to use salt and pepper so with these eggs are you just gonna let them fry like that or mix yep. them or how do you what, typically what what i'll do here i've now let the fire burn down so i literally got embers because i don't want the eggs to like burn to the bottom of the pan what will happen here is um they'll start going white as the heat comes up through the potatoes there and as that happens, I'll wait for the whites to actually congeal a bit. Then I'll break the yolks and just give this a little bit of a mess around and uh, and then um, and then give it a top coat with cheese. And then we'll just build the fire up just to finish it off at the end. So the food's almost done. Uh, Mark has kind of knocked us up a herbal tea. That's what real men do, you know, they have herbal teas. Oh, absolutely. That's it. So I just want to give a quick toast um, to those of you watching that for whatever reason, unable to get out, for a multitude of reasons and health and finance, etc., etc. Um, so we're just raising this glass in salute of those of you that can't get out. Take it easy. Cheers. Cheers. Mmm. That's like a nice single malt whiskey. It is. You envision it strong enough, you'll believe it. <laughs> Why is it I've got a bigger cup than you? Have you noticed that? Well, well you know, <laughs> it, it happens. <laughs> Big cup, little cup syndrome. <laughs> So Marky Mark, how are we looking? Right, so we're done. So let's have a little cutting ceremony. So we need a local Mary, man, cutting the tape. Look at right. that, that looks proper hearty, that looks. Let's see if we can do a semi-professional serving. Oh, look at that. Look at that. It's a vegan's nightmare right there, I tell you that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I held back on the bacon. That's <laughs> <laughs> it. Do you have it all to yourself? Yeah. There you go, my friend. Dive in. I'm going to eat from the pan. So here are the fruits of our labour for today. It doesn't look like much. Um, we've got a few bits here. We've got a few bits hanging up here, just here. Uh, got a couple of smaller bits in my bag. So one of those learnings that you get every time you go out and try and implement a skill is a lot of things look great in theory, and then you go out to do them. So one of the things myself and Mark have learned today uh, with the roots is we've done a lot of digging. 
well, like digging a tunnel to go underneath the Channel Coast, go to France. So we're doing a lot of digging. So a couple of things that we learn is, unless stuff is showing surface level, you have no idea about the roots. You literally have no idea. You will dig and you think, oh, there's a root going on here. But what we found was really common here. We'll find a, a, a nice thickness of root that will be going across and we'll dig a few inches and dig a few inches and the next minute, boom, it's going straight down or it's going straight in the other direction. And we found that pretty much most of the places that we were digging in. Um, so literally there's no point in kind of like taking off like, you know, four or five inches of a root. We obviously want at least a bit of a kind of like decent length, at least kind of a couple of feet to make it worthwhile taking out. Um, and that's what we found was quite common here. So some are going to go away and kind of research, you know, any more tips, even if you guys have them in terms of digging. Once again, um, in terms of like stuff, unless it's showing surface level, in my opinion, you just haven't got a clue. Uh, kind of like the, the quality and the length of root that you're going to find. Um, so once again, if you do have any suggestions or tips, let me know in the comments down below. And open all ears, really want to kind of learn more about this. And I'm definitely going to be doing a lot of my own research as well. But we've got a decent amount of root for now. Uh, so what I'm going to do is actually, because it's quite late in the day, we're going to be heading home now. So I'm going to take this home. When I'm ready to process it at home, uh, I'm going to obviously just wet it up and then just follow the steps that were outlined in the tutorial that's already been done on my channel on how to forage cedar roots. So like I said, I've mentioned earlier on, if you want to go and learn about that, be sure to check that out on my channel. That covers it in a lot more detail. Uh, but there you go, it's just a couple of those learnings that we've had regarding roots. Not as easy as it looks. So there you go, guys. That is a wrap for this short video. Mark, it was good hanging out as always. Always, Zed. Mark's a good mate of mine, you know. We met at the first course that I ever went on. We did, we uh, did, yeah. Week-long course, nice and romantic. Oh, that was about three years ago? That was a three and a half years, no, three years ago, yeah. yeah. It was about three yeah. years ago. So I met him, yeah. kept in touch since then. He's been a great help to me behind the scenes. Um, you're probably gonna be seeing Mark more, actually, on my channel. Oh, uh, lucky you. That's it, so lucky for you. <laughs> you have to see my mug every time. Um, but now he's gonna be helping me out quite a bit with the base camp, hopefully. When and as obviously he has time to kind of come down. Um, like I said, today's been a really good day. It was a catch up with Mark. Yep. Um, bit of iffy weather, weather in the morning, but thankfully that kind of like held up now. So it's actually a beautiful day now, isn't lovely it? Lovely bit of sunshine out Yeah, there. lovely bit of sunshine. Police sirens going off in the background. Helicopters, <laughs> that's it. Southeast life in England, man, that's what it is. Uh, but it's been a great day. We harvested some roots. We've learned a lot of lessons, I think, with the roots. We, we have, we have. Like I say, I've only ever gone for short sections for little jobs that you needed to do, like going for the longer sections. It's definitely taught me something. And going for the, um, the spruce um, roots. Yeah. But um, yeah, you're absolutely right with what you said, like the way they dive yeah. down, it's like, oh. We're getting excited every time we start digging, oh man, that looks like a fantastic yeah, bit yeah. of root. Next minute it's taking a nosedive, kamikaze, <laughs> straight back into the ground. I think it, it had foresight when it was drying, didn't it? I think an easy do yeah. dodgy boat was going yeah, to try and dig yeah, me up we'll one day. Yeah, we'll see them. That's it, we'll teach them a lesson. But it's been a great learning experience, that's yeah. always the case, as I mentioned. A lot of things look great in the books, textbooks and videos, but it's only when you get out to do stuff you realise not everything is as straightforward, yeah. uh, but it has the experience, it forces you to go out and learn why is yeah. this the case, how can things be done better. Um, but you're absolutely right, other people have probably come out and they've done it and they've learned other lessons. So uh, as they'd said, like, you know, help us out, any, any lessons that you've learned and clues you can give us, much appreciated. That's it. And then what we'll do, we'll take all the credit for it. We won't, oh, absolutely. We won't credit you at all. And people will think we're just even more cooler. That's it. Just being transparent with you in terms of our relationship, you understand? We've got to be quite open here. Um, but like I said, I hope that you enjoyed the video. Uh, it's all part of the process of getting stuff together for the base camp, all part of the learning experience. Um, and that is it. So, as always, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed seeing the man himself. Hopefully next time we'll have his handlebar tash. It's got, got to come back. It's got to make a comeback. Uh, I, I, I may try to, uh, to uh, yeah, yeah, get it going again. We'll see. <laughs> you have like proper moustache envy when you see that. <laughs> um, but it's been good hanging out with Mark. So hope you enjoyed the video. And as always, for Mark and myself, I hope whatever you're doing, you have a blessed day, a blessed week ahead. This is Everyone's Out Outdoors. Peace out. I need a hat now. <laughs> <laughs>